Olinda is one of the most well-preserved colonial towns in Brazil. It was once the capital of the federal state of Pernambuco on the Atlantic coast, and in 1982 was designated by UNESCO as a World Heritage Site. The view from the Alto de Sé across the roofs of Olinda, as well as the bay, also contains the skyline of the modern town of Recife. It frames the enchanting picture of the beautiful one. The first Portuguese immigrants were excited about this wonderful location when they landed here in 1535. They were followed by priests and monks. They built churches and monasteries within the palm groves on the hills, and this presented them with a marvelous view of the sea. Jesuits, Franciscans and Benedictines built a total of 33 religious buildings. Churches such as the Grecia São Jao adorn the slopes. They are protected monuments and have transformed Olinda into an open-air museum. The original town complex has survived right up to the present day, with alleys, various buildings and churches. The Igreja Nossa Senhora da Graça was built in 1575 in the center of the Amparo district. It was once Olinda's Jesuit school. The friars not only spread Catholicism, they also undertook the task of both running and teaching in the schools. So their presence was widely accepted. The Rua do Amparo has been beautifully renovated and the buildings shine out brightly. The small colonial buildings accommodate artists' ateliers and galleries. They feature mainly modern Brazilian art. It's a particularly lively and colorful area of the town that's known as the Pearl of Brazilian Baroque. In the beginning of the 17th century, the Dutch conquered various regions in the northeast of Brazil. So in 1630, Olinda was also occupied by them for a whole year. Most of the town was burned to the ground. Then it was rebuilt, in Dutch style naturally. It was a noble metropolis for the Lords of the Windmills. The Portuguese subsequently fought the Dutch and from 1654 they were the colonial masters of Olinda. Most of the town's important buildings date back to that time when the town prospered due to the cultivation of sugarcane. Religion in the town began to blossom. This is indicated by the remarkable Benedictine Monastery, the Mosteiro de Salbento, that has since been rebuilt. Particularly interesting is its magnificent golden altar. It took 30 master craftsmen to restore it. Francisco Suarez designed the ceiling above the high altar. 
the main building is one of the most important examples of late Baroque architecture. A special gem of colonial architecture is the facade of the Igreja do Carmo that was founded in 1580 and is the oldest Carmelite church building in Brazil. It's located in the heart of the old town. It also was burned down by the Dutch but was later rebuilt. The portal in Renaissance style and the altar highlight its original splendor. The dominant Convento de São Francisco is situated on a hill. It's framed by palm trees and features a wonderful view over the blue Atlantic Ocean. It's the oldest sacred building of the Franciscan order in Brazil. Typical Portuguese two-story arcades surround the tranquil inner courtyard of the famous monastery. The blue-colored walls of the arcades create a contemplative atmosphere. Here, the friars once strolled whilst being absorbed in prayer. The well-preserved Azulejos tiles feature scenes from the life of Holy Francisco. According to traditional Portuguese design, The monastery was abandoned after it was burned down by the Dutch. At the beginning of the 18th century, it was rebuilt. The inner walls of the main church of Igreja Nossa Senhora das Neves are also decorated with azulejos that again have been very well preserved. With its magnificent tiles and golden stucco work, these rooms are true masterpieces of a bygone age. The Capella de San Roque is crowned by a painted and highly detailed cassette ceiling. The most important religious building in Olinda continues to be cared for by the friars of the Franciscan order. The order is still very active throughout the entire north of Brazil. This splendid building underlines their religious activities. Olinda is a fine example of colonial splendor and sacred art. A unique masterpiece of Brazilian late Baroque. <laughs>